Presets can be a fun and useful area inside of Lightroom. And there's a lot of little tips around how we can use them. Things like stacking presets that's not you know, readily available out there, uh, your favorites, how to move them and organize them. So I put together this video with about five-ish, there's probably a few extra tips in there, um, tips on using your presets, getting the most out of them. So hopefully it makes your preset life just a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and jump in. As we jump into Lightroom, the first thing to know is I'm only talking about the develop module and the preset panel on the left-hand side. I'm not talking about brush or masking presets or import presets or printing or anything like that. Just develop presets on the left-hand side. First one is gonna be um, how to make your own preset groups because there really is no way when you come up to this preset panel and you click on the little plus and there's no way to say, I, I wanna make a new folder. You know, Maybe I've got, I wanna make a black and white folder and put all my black and white presets and move them in there, okay? So what you have is when you create a preset, you get the option to put it into a new group. So you could do it that way and you could just create a dummy preset, all right? Just don't even change the name of it, just put it into a new group, name the group what you want, put that dummy preset in there, and then from there you can drag and drop presets into different groups. Another thing you could do would be is if you wanted to put this preset into a different group, you could right click on it and choose move then go under the group setting here. And if you already have the group, you can just change it or you could put in new group. And then here I could type in, you know, black and white and hit create. And that'll create the new group for me and then click okay. And it'll actually make that group and move that preset in there. They're both about the same amount of clicks. So, you know, if you create the dummy preset and you can make a new group and then you've got to drag and drop and you can do that. You don't have to move it by right clicking like I did. Uh, you can just drag and drop. But if you want to create a whole new group, um, either create a dummy preset or do it the way that I did. Again, they're both about the same amount of clicks. So uh, one way is not necessarily so much faster than the other. Moving on down the line, we have favorites. So this is a this is a great little feature. A lot of people miss it. So if there's a preset that I use all the time, what I can do is right click on that preset and choose add to favorites right up there at the top. And then that's gonna add a favorites folder and you'll see that it's showing up there. It's got a little star on it. And that's how you'll, you'll know if you look through your preset folders, if you ever see a star in one, that means it's a favorite. And if you wanna take it out of there, all you gotta do is right click and choose remove from favorites. All right, next up, uh, a little bit about moving presets, which we did talk about a little bit and also some of the default Adobe presets. Also, if you are interested in presets, uh, ask for just 60 seconds to help pay the bills. I've got a preset pack that is, I'm, I'm calling it the world's first AI powered adaptive presets because I haven't seen anything like it. And with recent changes in Lightroom, we're able to do things with presets that we never were before because we can use the AI powered select subject and select sky. So imagine this, I make a preset for the sky I don't use the gradient filter, which if I made a preset on my photo, which worked, and you apply it to your photo, if your horizon line's in a different place, you have to go readjust it. But with Select Sky, it will now automatically recompute the preset for your photo, which is really good because now we can do things where we can make a preset to work on the sky or to work on the subject. And no matter what photo we use it on, we're able to leverage the power of having some of that work automatically done for us. So imagine, you know, I've got a whole folder full of sky presets and now I just hover over and I can see it make changes to the sky and I can get some different creative options just by hovering over and seeing it work directly on my sky, not on the sky that it worked on when the preset was created. So I hope you'll swing by the website and take a look. On to tip number three, which I had mentioned a little bit about moving, managing, and some of the default Adobe presets. I'm gonna combine this all into one tip. So I alluded to the fact that you could click on a preset and you could click and drag it and move it into another preset group. You can't duplicate it, you can, but you can move it, okay? If you wanted to duplicate it, honestly, there really is no way to duplicate it other than you know, click on it, apply the preset, come up here, create a new preset with a different name. So if you wanted to move your presets around, you can do that. Important to know that favorites, user presets, and then all of the folders you create abide by a few different rules than all of the ones below it. All right, all the ones below it are default Adobe presets. So when you go in here, even if you right click on a preset, you have very, very few options. You can't move, you can't delete, you can't update or change them in any way, you can't rename them. So they're there, they're gonna be what they are, all right? You can move the ones at the top, you can't move these. 
Now, what you could do if you wanted to clean this up, and I would suggest you do it, which is right click over here, choose manage presets, and then you can show and hide all the presets from all of those different groups in there. So that'll make it a lot easier to, uh, to see. There's no reason to keep all these presets if you're not using them. And don't just keep them there. If you think, eh, maybe I'll use it one day, I would say make this as clean as possible because there's a lot of very old and unuseful presets inside of this list here. Okay, and if you ever get to the point where you think you forgot something, you can go, go back in and just choose reset hidden presets and that'll just reset everything to how it was before. Next up, we have under the edit menu on a PC, you would see preferences or you're gonna see under the Mac under Lightroom Classic menu is preferences. You're gonna go in your preferences window and there is a global preference setting here for presets. So this can do a few different things. The one main thing is it'll allow you to apply a global default preset to everything. Always good when you click on these little links here to see what Adobe has to say about it as well. You'll learn a couple of tips, but you can apply a global, a global preset from pick from your whole entire preset panel here. Go ahead, do it, give it a try. Um, I'm not a big fan of global presets, but I know a lot of people are. And if you wanted to dig down and go specifically to camera models, a preset for a specific camera model, you can do that by clicking on that little checkbox and creating defaults that way too, okay? And then the last tip, which is stacking. So I get this question a lot, can you stack presets? First thing I would say is try it. You'll learn a lot better what happens when you click on one preset and then when you click on another one. One of the problems with presets is, is we can't see what's inside of it. The only thing I can do is click on a preset and go over here and look in the develop module to see what's inside of it. So there's no real good way, I should say, to see what's inside of a preset. But what happens with stacking is people wonder, so can I, can I apply multiple presets together? You can, right? I can go in here and look. Again, always best thing you can ever do is try it. Look, I clicked on one, I clicked on another one, clicked on another one, clicked on another, I'm not getting any errors, everything's working just fine. So what's really happening there? What's really happening is it's not stacking, it is just adding to whatever is already there. So if preset one adjusted exposure and preset one also adjusted dehaze, right? And I click and apply that to a photo. Now I go to, I have that same photo and I click on preset number two, which maybe also adjusted exposure to something else and maybe adjusted texture to something else. What would happen? Well, on pre, after I click on preset number two, whatever exposure was set to in preset number two would get changed. And then whatever clarity or dehaze that I had in preset number one, that would get left alone because that's not part of preset two. So we just leave it alone to whatever it was before, whether it was what you set it in at the preset, maybe you made a change since, it just leave it alone. And then it would override whatever your texture setting was. Even if you hadn't touched texture, it would override it to whatever this texture setting would be. So I hate, I hate to say you can stack them because stacking to me implies layering. It's not really stacking or layering, that layering them on top of each other. They're just overriding whatever was in each one. But again, the best way to learn this part is to try it, okay? And then the last thing would be, I said you can't stack presets. What you can do is in the masking panel over here, when you're doing something with select subject or select sky or any of these things over here, and you make an adjustment to the photo, when you make a preset, you'll have the option to add that to the actual preset, which is pretty cool, right? It's pretty neat to be able to add, especially some of these AI based things and it'll recalibrate for the new sky. And that will get added in there. But what'll happen is, is if you add that into the preset, if you keep clicking on other presets, it actually will start stacking them. So an example here, let's go up to my landscape ones. So I'll click on bright foreground, bright sky, and you'll see it makes two masks over here, one for the foreground, one for the sky. If I were to click on another preset, it'll actually go in here and make even more masks. Let's go down and let's do foreground bright. There we go. So it actually made another one called foreground bright, and it stack that on top of it. If I click on another one, you can see it even stacks that on top of it. So you will get stacking. I don't think the photo looks good, but you will get stacking if you're using these masking adjustments over here. They will stack on top of each other, but your normal develop settings, everything that you have over here will just get overridden 
based on whatever is included inside of that preset. And the one thing that I would suggest is to experiment with that a little bit on your own, because I think you'll learn a lot by discovery rather than, you know, I'll get, I had somebody that asked me, what happens if I click on five different presets? I don't know, just try it, see what happens. You're, you won't explode Lightroom. You can always click the reset button when it's done. Also, if you're looking for a video to watch next, that concept that I talked about here about having those AI powered selections when it comes to select subject and select sky, it doesn't just apply to presets, it also applies to syncing photos. So if you're somebody that doesn't use presets, but maybe you wanna get through a large batch of photos fast, this is a really powerful concept to understand and why it's so important, because it, it, it is brand new, summer of 2022. We've never had this feature before. I think it's actually one of the most impactful things to hit Lightroom in a long time. So if you're looking for a little bit more info, this video would be a great place to go next.